China celebrates its Lunar New Year and welcomes in the Year of the Tiger. Hello, I'm Mike Walter, filling in for Anna Naidu, and this is The Heat. Chinese both at home and abroad are celebrating China's Lunar New Year, with 2022 being marked as the Year of the Tiger. The festivities kicked off with China Media Group's major spring festival, Gala, as hundreds of millions of Chinese tuned in to watch the TV extravaganza. Celebrations come just days before China welcomes the world to the Winter Olympics in Beijing. To discuss all of this, joining me now from Beijing is Victor Gao. He is chair professor at Suchow University. Also joining me and joining in the discussion is Zun Ahmed Khan. She is a research fellow at the Center for China and Globalization. And with us from California is Malcolm Young. He's executive director of the Chinatown Community Development Center in San Francisco. I want to welcome all of you to the show and happy Chinese New Year. Victor, let me start with you. Happy Lunar New Year to you. Excitement undoubtedly away, uh, underway there in China. Give me an idea of, of what it's like. Thank you very much for having me. Happy Chinese Lunar New Year to you and to all your audience. Uh, China is right now in the middle of this uh, Lunar New Year festival. Uh, about uh, uh, seven hours ago, it was the midnight of the Chinese New Year. And today is the January the 1st of the Chinese New Year. So the whole nation is in great celebration. And I would say people of Chinese uh, ancestry throughout the world are uh, joining this great global gala celebration. It marks the formal beginning of spring, and from now on, I think the people will be cheering up more and more to welcome the spring really coming, and everything will start again. The beginning of the Chinese New Year normally uh, starts with uh, one week or up to about 15 days of celebrations, uh, everything shuts down, for example, it's a family time. Everyone travels back to their own families, for example. But then, starting seven days from today, or 15 days from today, everything starts anew again. Everyone, go everyone goes back to their work, everything seems to be resurrected, etc. It's work again. So, when we are all engaged with family celebrations, gatherings now, we are also fully aware the new year is coming, Everyone is uh, ready, preparing for starting anew, and the whole country, the whole nation, everything else will be uh, rejuvenated once again for the whole year. Now, this year's uh, Spring Festival uh, happens at a very, very uh, unique time because in about three days, the Beijing Winter Olympics will be formally launched, and athletes are already in Beijing preparing for the Winter Olympics so everyone during the celebration of the Chinese New Year will be able to watch the television to see how athletes including from the United States American athletes will compete in their own excellent way for higher uh, faster and more excellent performances during the Winter Olympics we are all very happy now we are all looking forward to the Winter Olympics and peace for all mankind. Yeah, an exciting time, no doubt about it. Uh, you, when talking to Victor, you get this sense of renewal, the sense of possibility. Zuna, I want to ask you as a non-Chinese person living there in China to give me your perspective. What's it like for you? Well, uh, firstly, thank you for having me and a very happy new year. Just like uh, Victor Gao mentioned, this is like the first January where people are filled with hope for a new start, a new beginning, an opportunity to, you know, reflect on the previous year and think about how we can move forward and really, like he mentioned, the fact that uh, the Chinese New Year is coinciding with the Winter Olympics just adds to the excitement. So for me as a foreigner, I think one of the surprising things was that I was accustomed to, you know, Chinatowns all over the world. Um, there are a lot of parades and it's more like people are going to restaurants and going out, the Chinese communities, or at least that was my impression. But in China, it's really about family. It's called the Great Migration because people will plan the entire year to make sure that this period they can spend with their families. A lot of uh, it is about cooking at home, buying a lot of food. This is another interesting thing. Like people will buy many groceries and make sure that they can spend this week 
at home in a very cozy, comfortable environment and uh, really spend this time with the people they love the most. So it's a very family-oriented holiday. And for me, um, I've been living here for six and a half years and I do have my own family in Beijing as well. So for instance, yesterday, we had a little get together, people from all over the world. Uh, we, we made a home cooked meal. It was like a potluck. So, you know, we also try to, uh, and it's not even an effort. It's really the feeling of the moment. Like everyone is thinking about the people they're closest to. So as a foreigner, we also celebrate, we also join in uh, that, that uh, excitement and uh, make sure that you know this is this is really an opportunity for us to reflect and it's 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 also good because we have a month between uh the western new year which is what i've celebrated in pakistan and the chinese new year so um that feeling is completely the same where we are thinking about what is a positive way forward how can we improve ourselves and we are all looking forward to watching the winter olympics as well so this year the celebration is uh, about uh, how these athletes, just like Victor mentioned, uh, we are hoping for more peace in 2022. So the Winter Olympics are another manifestation of how the world can come together and really create something special where we are all included and uh, we, we, we can look forward to more opportunities like these where globally, despite whatever differences uh, countries may have, people may have, the point is we find common ground and work together. So yes, it's definitely festive. Well, well said. Uh, Malcolm, obviously the celebrations aren't confined to China. Uh, we're seeing celebrations throughout the United States as well. Edis Johnson uh, gives us a sense of what it's like in Los Angeles. Let's watch that and I want to get your reaction on the other side. It's the Chinese New Year, so we've come to visit the Chinatown here in Los Angeles. So we've come to one of these uh, gift stores to speak to some of the locals here. They're saying that the Chinese locals here are already excited about the New Year. They're coming here buying gifts for their friends as well as some decorations for uh, their homes. And since the New Year is the year of Tiger, a lot of those products are selling. So I just stopped by here today to buy one of these as a gift for myself hoping that it will bring a good fortune to me and all of us in this new year. Malcolm, uh, celebrations there in uh, Los Angeles, but uh, you're in the San Francisco area, which is the oldest uh, Chinatown in the U.S., and some would say the, the largest. So give me a sense of what it's like there. Yeah, you know, I would say uh, in many ways it's very uh, similar to Los Angeles. Um, you know, I think uh, uh, the way that Zuna framed it as sort of a family time uh, in China, I would say um, uh, here in the States and certainly in San Francisco, uh, it definitely is a family time, but it's also an outward facing moment. Um, it's a moment for uh, our Chinese American communities to really celebrate our, our cultural uh, identities. Um, but I would say even more important uh, to take pride in that identity um, in, a, in a country that is, is diverse, um, has numerous ethnicities, and sometimes as a result, it's easy to get a little bit lost in that shuffle. And I think this is a moment for uh, Chinese Americans to really step forward and uh, take pride in who they are uh, in the places that they grew up, like Chinatown, um, you know, like Los Angeles. Uh, this is a moment when uh, we have a lot of festivities. Uh, just this past weekend was the official opening of uh, our Chinese New Year's period, uh, launched by a two-day um, street festival uh, called the Flower Fair, um, in which uh, all the streets in Chinatown were effectively shut down. Um, uh, and lined with different booths. Folks brought out their wares, their flowers, uh, and people would come in and shop. Um, this is a, a certainly an economically important time for a, a places like Chinatown. Uh, roughly 30% uh, of, uh, uh, of our small businesses' revenue are generated during the Chinese New Year period. Um, so you can imagine how incredibly significant that is. Uh, following on this weekend's festivities, um, there's going to be, of course, uh, tomorrow, February 1st, uh, will be the opening ceremonies uh, in Chinatown just to welcome in the new year. Um, we'll have a couple of celebrations in the heart of Chinatown. Uh, and then the big thing, you know, for us is going to be February 19th, uh, which is the Chinese New Year's parade. Um, that parade is the largest uh, nighttime parade in actually North America. Uh, typically, over a million people will come out to see the parade, um, you know, which again is a huge economic generator for this community. So, Chinese New Year's is just so uh, incredibly important for the community economically, uh, culturally, um, um, you know, as sort of a point of pride. Uh, but last but certainly not least, it's also the moment when we as a community uh, get together uh, and, uh, like I said, celebrate who we are, 
uh, but any in many ways reconnect, renew the bonds uh, that may have faded a little bit in this past year. And um, given sort of these past two years with the pandemic, that's uh, certainly more important than ever before. You know, you talked about the economic engine aspect of this, and, and I want to get your thoughts on this because one of the things I've seen here in, in Washington, D.C. in recent years, uh, Chinatown, right downtown from where we are, it's also where uh, the, the uh, facilities are for the professional basketball team, the Washington Wizards, the Capitals. And I've seen over the last recent years where they've done celebrations uh, honoring the China New Year's. Uh, are we seeing more of that as well, where there's this kind of an embracing of this holiday? Well, um, you know, I, I certainly think so. Um, you know, some uh, a fellow community member actually uh, said to me recently, and I, I took these words to heart, um, you know, you, you don't really miss something or you don't value it as much uh, until you realize that it could go away. And I certainly think that that's what's been uh, happening uh, these last couple of years with the pandemic. Um, Chinatown was the first to be hit economically because of, unfortunately, um, racist-driven stereotypes of uh, where the coronavirus was coming from. Um, that reduced visitation to Chinatown uh, quicker than it did to other neighborhoods in San Francisco. Uh, so we certainly took the hit. Um, another big component of Chinatown are uh, banquets and events to celebrate exactly things like the New Year's, uh, but pretty much everything else. Uh, and because of limitations on gatherings, uh, those have effectively gone away. And so I think for the first time, uh, uh, people really started to realize that uh, Chinatown cannot be taken for granted. Uh, Chinatown is not going to be uh, permanent and exist forever uh, unless all of us are very intentional about valuing this community. So, um, you know, I do think that uh, this coming year um, we're going to see a, a heightened level of uh, attention and celebration. And if this past weekend's a flower fair is any indication, um, the number of visitors that came to Chinatown was, um, I would just say, um, reassuring. Uh, and for me, it was quite emotional uh, to really see this number of people coming to Chinatown and valuing it in that way. Uh, great, great points. Uh, and joining me now here in the studio is CGT in America digital reporter Gabriel Yue Yin. Uh, great to have you here. And speaking of, you know, forgetting about some of the things that we, I, I'm not used to sitting here across from somebody. I want to let everybody know we're fully vaxxed. We're in good shape. We've been wearing our masks all day long, but it's great to have you sitting up here. And it's great to get your perspective, too, because it, you're unique in the sense that here you are in the United States. You've been here for a couple years now. But before that, you were in Brazil. You've obviously been in China. You've gone through this experience in a lot of different locales. How is it different, and, and how is it the same? Yeah, well, first, thank you for having me. And it's good to hear all of these guests talking about Spring Festival. I was smiling <laughs> this whole time. But yeah, like you said, I've been to different places and watching different celebrations. And it really gives me different perspectives of how the Chinese New Year has evolving. Uh, when I was a little, when I was in China, it was all about families getting together, eating a crazy amount of food. And, 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 and that was just it. Uh, but then when I moved to Brazil, it was, it was more about celebrating the festival with colleagues or with the Ch Chinese community. Community. Uh, and I was very, uh, I got here in the United States in a very unique timing that a few months after I got here, the COVID started. So it basically changed everything. Uh, so I've been here for like two spring festivals where I can't unite with people. Uh, so now I realize that, you know, spring festival is not just about food, it's not just about, you know, people you celebrate with, but more about cherishing this the spirit of getting together with people, this emotional ties with people. Yeah, it's so interesting because Malcolm, I think, hit on the same notes. But to me, I want to get your thoughts on this. You know, uh, it's, it's such a draw. It's like a magnet back home. And you hear all these stories. And I'm sure you saw the, the gala today. Does it get you somewhat homesick, melancholy, uh, or, or you just kind of celebrate it your own way here? Yeah, well, don't get me started on this. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because of the jet lag, uh, the, the Spring Festival Gala, it starts uh, today it's more in the morning, like 7 AM. And I was like, nah, I'm not going to get up for that. It's too early for me. But what happened was like 6.50, I was up. And I was on my phone, like, oh, I wanted to start, start soon. And I was on social media, scrolling, talking to my friends about the shows, about the singers we really like, or the programs we really like. So it was really very excited. And I was, I was thinking about you know, how much I've changed in terms of that. Because when I was with my family, sort of, it was more like something, the TV is on. We talk, we play games, and we watch it at the same time. But I was never so focused on that. But I guess this year, because of COVID, because of all of you know, other possibilities were cut up. So it became a major focus of the uh, celebration this year. 
Victor, let's talk a little bit about the, the gala because Gabriel has talked about it. Uh, it is kind of this thing that galvanizes a nation. Everybody's busy watching it. I think that Guinness says it's the most watched uh, television program, you know, around the world. Um, let me get a sense of how that's changed, because back in 1983, probably everybody's sitting in the, in the same room watching it. Now people have their, their phones they can watch it on. But, but how does it bring people together? Well, as we mentioned, the Chinese Lunar New Year, which is actually also very much uh, readjusted by the solar calendar system, is very scientific. And uh, it is really uh, celebrating the celestial rotations, and it's very uh, natural and environmental in a sense. It's not a religious holiday. It's not a big holiday named after one historical figure, for example. So when, w whenever we celebrate the Chinese Lunar New Year, we remind ourselves again the importance of family and then the importance of the whole world nature, environment, and the whole cosmos. So it's a very, very unique way, and it dates back more than 3,000 years. And when we gather together in the family, now we are all connected by uh, smartphone, internet, etc. So it is no longer a very traditional self-enclosed family gathering. It's a gathering at home, all connected with the rest of the world. And this really creates a lot of new fun. For example, last night, when we were watching this annual Spring Festival a gala television performance, which has been happening uh, for more than 30 years in China, it's one of the biggest uh, social gala events uh, every year, uh, everyone is also very much glued to their smartphone connected in their own way through their own personal network, not only throughout China, but possibly throughout the world. Because after all, we are talking about more than 100,000 Chinese diaspora throughout the world. Now, if you are not Chinese, there is no problem because the Chinese New Year celebration is really a gathering of friends, family members, about food, about chatting about what happened in last year of the ox, and what's your expectation for this new year, the year of tiger? Tiger is a symbol of dynamism and activity. And we expect that the Chinese New Year of 2022 will be a year of major, major dynamic events. And we all want to see peace prevail. Everyone gathers, recharged, rededicated. And then in about seven days or 15 days uh, from now, uh, because personal circumstances vary, uh, we will go back to work again. We will be reconnected through our institutions, uh, government agencies or corporates, or go back to our farm work in the rural areas. And this is a day of great continuity. It's a day of great connectivity of family members and friends. It's a great connectivity of we, the human species, with the rest of the world and the rest of the commerce, cosmos. Uh, Malcolm, uh, Gabriel got up early to watch uh, the gala. Did you watch it there? Uh, I have to admit that I did not, uh, um, uh, per the point of uh, being with family, um, you know, one of the things that I'm really grateful for is that uh, our, our San Francisco Unified School District, uh, not for the first time, uh, but in recent years has decided to uh, allow families to honor uh, Lunar New Year by taking the, the days off. So I was with my family, admittedly, uh, skiing. <laughs> That's a good way to spend it as well. Gabriel, you know, one of the things I'd like you to talk about is, is growing up in China and, and your experience with the Lunar New Year compared to your parents, because you say it's a, it's a market difference, isn't it? Yeah, it is, it certainly is. And I, I think one of our guests already mentioned how, you know, the smartphone, the social media factored into the adjustments of, uh, of the uh, Spring Festival Gala, I think in Spring Festival in general, because I remember when I was a little, as I said, it was just about eating a lot of food. Uh, and, you know, in recent years, there has been there's this kind of discussion on whether we are feeling less the Spring Festival vibes because people are just get tired of eating and eating all the time. <laughs> but I guess this is the generational difference we're facing at because literally, for example, the generation of my parents or, or my grandparents, 
when they were young, Spring Festival was literally the only day that they could expect the best meal of the year. And there are still, you know, some uncles and aunts told me that they, that was the only day that they can have a lot of meat to eat. But of mm. course, with all these years, uh, all these socioeconomic developments today, you know, whenever you think you have the best meal, there's something better waiting tomorrow. So I guess this factor of, you know, having the best meal has already faded. Uh, but nowadays, you know, people are just so glued to their phone, they just scroll everything, post everything, and there used to be complaints about that as well. But this year, especially because of COVID, I, lots of people like me, I, we can't go back home. So social media became the place where we share about our, you know, festive celebrations, and that sort of united people in a different way. So I guess, I think what's beautiful about Spring Festival celebration is that it evolves with time, but the value keeps maintaining the same. It's all about sharing and, and, and you know, can, really just sharing the value that we all, we all have. So, uh, you, you touched on this earlier about uh, the Olympics starting this week. So uh, it really has to be a different kind of uh, Lunar New Year in a sense because it's, it's a dual celebration. So what's it like, just how vibrant are things there in China uh, this week, especially leading up to the Olympics, which kick off this week? Well, firstly, I have a quick, quick uh, comment on uh, on the Chinese New Year gala as well, because it's it's obviously important for Chinese families that have been watching it for 30 years. Uh, but it was also important for us because we timed the gala with our dinner yesterday, and also that people who are learning Chinese. I'm not sure if the rest of your panelists know, but uh, those foreigners uh, or non-native Chinese speakers who are learning Chinese. Uh, the Spring Festival Gala is an important part of their courses as well. They're, they're recommended mm. to watch it. So a lot of us have been watching it for many years, uh, and those people learning Chinese especially. And as far as the double celebrations are concerned, obviously, uh, I think the fact that we're talking about, firstly, the year of the tiger. So one of the things uh, that people in English at least are saying is that may you roar like the tiger. This is about energy, festivity, and the Olympics are obviously about the same. It's a very positive and energetic start to the Chinese New Year. Uh, every celebration that we've held, for example, I'm part of the Global Young Leaders Dialogue, which is a community of young professionals, and we hosted uh, a Chinese New Year and a Spring Festival gathering, which was also uh, plus wishing well for the Winter Olympics. What are our predictions? How we have enjoyed winter sports? Uh, that's obviously another part of, especially in uh, northern parts of China, people have been uh, skiing, involved in winter sports some way or the other. So this winter festival, uh, at least the people that I know, they are even more keen to, uh, during this week, uh, obviously have that meal with the family and enjoy those cozy indoors. Uh, this is a special moment of reflection and family bonds. But it's also a time when they can go out, go skiing, go ice skating, etc. So the the Olympics have invigorated that basic, um, you know, interest in winter sports. So it's double the fun. I've been, uh, I I did a, a, docu a mini uh, documentary for a Gong Dong Media last week. Uh, we went to the Great Wall and and sort of talked about obviously the Chinese Spring Festival and also how the Winter Olympics. Uh, uh, what are our predictions for the Olympics? How can this really impact uh, global uh, peace, dialogue, positive communication, and how this is a very uh, good start to a Chinese New Year? And also that the athletes will be experiencing Chinese New Year uh, as they are uh, as they are all together. Uh, preparing for the Olympics yeah. uh, just days from now. So well, it's, it's double the celebration and double the energy. Yeah, well, Malcolm uh, is is definitely taking advantage of both. Uh, he's combining, <laughs> hitting the slopes. You're trying to do everything to just kind of combine uh, both this week. But, but talk to me about how uh, this celebration kind of folds into the fabric of the United States, which has this belief that it's a melting pot. I mean, we think of Cinco de Mayo, how important it is, St. Patrick's Day. As a snapshot into different cultures, and, and, and you know, Chinese culture is so rich and such a big part of, of the U.S., can you talk to us about that? Yeah, you know, um, I, I, I'll just say on, on that front, um, you know, I think I mentioned earlier that, um, you know, these celebrations are just an opportunity, I think, for um, Chinese Americans like me and, and my colleagues in our community to, to really kind of point to something with pride and lift it up. But, you know, I also just want to point out, you know, that I think with, with the United States, I mean, there is a, a checkered past of um, racism against sort of Chinese communities dating back to the 1800s, despite the fact that we contributed so much 
uh, to the fabric of this country and building this country. Um, and, you know, Chinese New Year's, Lunar New Year's, the celebrations we had uh, were in many ways uh, another way of kind of asserting um, our place in this community, but from the perspective of being uh, Chinese and, and culturally and, and not being ashamed, uh, you know, of that past. So uh, on many levels, um, you know, Lunar New Year for us symbolizes so many different things. Um, and, and, you know, I do want to just quickly comment on, on the Olympics. I should have said earlier that I was inspired to go skiing by the Olympics. <laughs> um, but I do want to note that um, uh, it is exciting uh, to see so many Asian American uh, athletes um, representing America, but going to China. Nathan Chen, Alyssa Liu, who are both from the Bay Area, uh, Chloe Kim, who's an, a Korean American. I, I think it's so interesting to see this. And then Eileen Gu, who is an American born. Um, a woman who is uh, uh, representing China. It, it's it's so fascinating uh, to see all of this play out through the Olympics. And, uh, Victor, we've got about uh, 50 seconds left. I want to get your thoughts. Last year, of course, uh, U.S. President Joe Biden called uh, President Xi, wished him a happy uh, Chinese New Year, and extended the same wish to the Chinese people. This is also a time when people put aside their differences and can actually connect with one another as well. That's an important phase of this as well, right? Absolutely. I think China and the United States are the two most important nations in the world, and the Chinese people and the American people have all the reasons to get along with each other amicably, and we should not be uh, 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 deceived by some hostile forces into enemies against each other. We can be friends with each other, not only now, but in many, many years and decades going forward. Peace between China and the United States will be good for both of us and for mankind. Well, no doubt about it. We'll leave it there. Great points. I want to thank our guests, and I definitely want to be friends with Gabriel's family. That looked like quite a spread. Thank you all for joining us. Really appreciate it. That's going to do it for this edition of The Heat. I'm Mike Walter in Washington, D.C., and again, happy Year of the Tiger. Thanks so much for watching.